Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel and happy October, it's spooky season. That said, for me, October through to October is constantly spooky season. Um, I am a huge horror fan, although my books aren't as horror as my film collection, but there you go. Um, but October is of course a lovely spooky season, December is also a fantastic spooky season, I love December for ghost stories, although I think I have some ghost stories here. Um, but yeah, I do love December for some ghosts as well. So obviously I haven't been around for a while. No reason why, really. Um, coronavirus hit everybody. I wasn't in the mood. I had moments of, do I want to? What have I got to say? And then I thought, oh, I have fun doing it, so let's just do it. I'm here for the fun. Can you tell I'm here for the fun? Anyway, I'm just going to go through the books I have. Have I told you what I'm doing? I'm doing spooky books. Spooky. Which, of course, is um, all down to your preference. Is preference the right word? We don't always agree on the same books. What I think might be spooky about these books, you may disagree. That's perfectly fine. That's what I love about booktube. I'm going to start before I embarrass myself anymore. The first book that I want to talk about, um, still got the sticker on it, and I've only recently read it, but that was The Little Stranger by Sarah Waters. I loved this book so much. It's a, it's a quite a big book, actually. We're on 499 pages. <laughs> I read it on holiday recently. Um, I'm trying not to say um. And in trying not to say it, I said it, but there you go. This book follows um, a doctor who is called to a lonely patient at Hundreds Hall, which he visited as a child. Hundreds Hall is basically where the story takes place. The creepiness that happens there, that's all I'm going to say. There is creepiness in an old hall. The ending, you may love it, you may hate it. I loved it. I loved it so much, I actually went out and picked up Fingersmith. Is it Fingersmith? Yes. This isn't the first Sarah Waters book I have read. I did watch... Watch? I did read Nightwatch. I think it's called Nightwatch. I apologise if it isn't. I should have researched that. I read that first, and that confused me because of how it was told. However, I didn't like it. No, I didn't. But that's on me. I imagine if I went back to it now, I, I seem to mature or enjoy different things as the years go by. And I think I read that a few years ago, so I wouldn't mind trying it again. But we were talking about The Little Stranger. The atmosphere, the characters, the infuriation of the Doctor. I believe I posted on my Instagram about it. I wanted to batter the Doctor so much. I understand that as a Doctor, science is his thing. Everything else is just mental illness. However, I do believe that there is more on heaven than earth that is thought of in your philosophy, I believe. I can't remember. I'm quoting that from The Haunting of Hill House, which I know is a quote from something else. I mean, I'm not that well versed, but I'm not that bad. So The Little Stranger, I, I think I've read it in maybe two days. Like I said, we were on holiday for two weeks. We had to um, leave the house for two weeks due to the landlady rewiring the whole house. So we had to go. Um, I've never been on two, uh, two week holiday before. It was too long. I didn't enjoy the last week, but I did get lots of reading done. And that was one of them. The next book is Richard Lehman, Darkness Tell Us. This is an old book and I say old as in like it's old but to me um so I think this was first published in 1991 so it's not that old in all fairness but it was one of the first Richard Lehman books I read you know I have um a hate love relationship with this author he's not particularly friendly towards women um we have I think it was blood games that I was, I haven't got rid of it. Um, I actually have, I think, six Richard Lehman books and I've still got hold of them. But this one I really liked. So it's been a while, but I do remember loving it because it has an Ouija board in it. I love Ouija boards. I have one upstairs. I should have put it behind me to be like proper spooky. Um, I'll have to show it you some other time. Um, I think they're beautiful. Mine's wood. It's fantastic. 
Um, and I believe that they, yes, so we have an Ouija board, we have a group of people, we have a hike, and we have, I believe it or not, do we have a body? I think there's a body in there somewhere as well, of course. I cannot remember exactly the story, which I know what you're thinking. Why are you recommending it if you don't remember the story? I don't remember the story, but I remember liking it and finding it really creepy, especially the hike. Anytime anybody's out in the wilderness and something goes wrong is definitely one for me where I'm like, Ooh, it gets me. So I'm very excited um, about that as a, a premise, uh, a concept, and this has it. So yeah, I'm rusty. Please remember that I'm rusty. <laughs> The next book I have is Bernard Taylor's The More Stone Sickness. This book still haunts me to this day. The ending is everything. Um, it's gut punching. It's sad. It's delightful. It's evil. And it's also not really that unique anymore. Um, I mean, I don't really think there's that many unique um, stories out there anymore. Just the way that you kind of tell the story. I mean, feel free to lynch me for that thought, but you know what I mean. So this was published in 1982. And the book, its font, is Janssen. It's nice to be told. Um, this follows a couple that are getting away from London and they come across a, a quaint little village where there's a house. And I think the house is just like perfect, but everything just is like too perfect. And everyone's really friendly, which I would struggle with. I mean, a, a polite hello and a nod, I can deal with that. But really friendly people. I had somebody... Side note, I had somebody talking to me when I went um, food shopping the other night and it freaked me out. <laughs> and I was like, oh. Um, but yeah, so everything's just too perfect. Everyone's too nice. Um, and they probably need to leave as soon as they can. But knowing them, they'll wait too long and it will be too late. Seriously, this really is such a good book. I love Bernard Taylor. I've got, um, I've got Sweetheart, Sweetheart by Bernard Taylor as well. This is a proper old copy. Um, yeah, so this was, um, a library book and it was withdrawn and yeah, we bought that. My husband bought me this actually. So I do love Bernard Taylor. Um, so there you go. Who's next? I Am Legend by Richard Matheson. I love Richard Matheson. I actually have Hell House printed out on a PD, um, on paper. I don't know why I have it like that. I'm starting to think maybe I downloaded it from somewhere and that was probably not okay, but it was a long time ago. I think I was a teenager when I did that, so I apologise um, for doing that. That's Back then I just thought, oh, free book. Now I'm like, oh, no, that's stealing. Uh, luckily, I have since purchased a Richard Matheson book, so I'm hoping that makes up for it. Look at me just giving you all my, my secrets here, what I did when I was younger. I'm a different person now. I'm an adult. So I Am Legend is a terrifying book, really, of isolation. Um, I'm not so scared about what's outside. It's the fact that Robert has been completely left on his own. I think that was personified for me because I saw the film first with Will Smith. And I must have been the only person in the audience watching this horror film. Horror, thriller. I'd say horror because of the creatures. And I was the only person in the cinema sobbing. I was actually sobbing. <laughs> so it just, it made me so sad when he is talking to the mannequins. Oh my goodness, my heart just broke. So I read the book um, years later after watching the film. And it's, it's really good. It is really good. Um, one man's survival against, I believe they're vampires. Yes, they're vampires. Um, and it's just such an interesting way to look at the story, I think, anyway. Um, but yeah, I um, I do I do enjoy this. Look at me articulating myself so well. The next book is not what I would call a horror book per se, um, but then it's not just horror that's horrifying. You know, I've got some sci-fi, oh my god, sci-fi can be terrifying. Um, there's so many books that I find horrifying. Um, a Little Life is horrifying. But I'm just saying that these are, you would probably find these in the horror section. And that is 11 Days by Donald Harstad. I'm a huge Donald Harstad fan. I have all his books, 
November Rain was a letdown. Sorry, I want my I want my um, Carl Houseman to be based in Iowa. I don't want him in London. He doesn't belong in London. He is perfect in Iowa. Anyway, I digress. This basically follows. I believe it's the first novel. This follows Carl Houseman, and he is a uh, deputy sheriff um, in rural Iowa. Um, Donald Hastad himself was. Um, a police officer in rural Iowa. Um, I don't know if he was a deputy sheriff. He may have been. So the details are fantastic. And this one starts with, my God, my God, help us here. Help us here, please. Um, they're dispatched. And when they go to the house, shit goes down, basically. I believe this one also has like a cult element. Uh, yeah, and it, it's fantastic because it's rural Iowa. I've never been to Iowa, but as it's rural, you've kind of got the landscape to deal with, the vastness of getting from place to place. Um, people are left pretty much on their own. So they kind of, you know, they have their own traditions, their own thoughts, and they play out that way. Uh, it's just a, such a good book. Um this one, I would say, I mean, they're all terrific, but this one's the most haunting of them. So I would definitely recommend 11 Days. And I got this in a charity shop. You're not surprised, I know. Okay. The next book should be no surprise, or it might be, I don't know, is Susan Hill, The Woman in Black. I have um, recently watched the 1989 TV, BBC TV adaptation, and the woman herself was just fantastically done. Um, the outfit, the placement of her on the screen was just fantastic. I didn't actually enjoy it apart from that. Um, I'm not um, a huge fan of the, the Daniel Radcliffe one, although it does have my Mr. Rochester in it. So I did enjoy it for that element. But we're talking about the book. Um, the Woman in Black follows Arthur Kipps. He is a junior solicitor and he has to go to Eel Marsh House to deal with the paperwork of a woman that lived there. And with all good juicy ghost stories, there's a secret. Shit went down. Can Arthur get out unscathed? It's just so good. I really, really liked it. And I have spoken about this before because somebody was kindly kind enough to mention about it on my channel that they met Susan Hill and she was quite lackluster, which is a shame. It really is a shame. But I still enjoy the book. Um, I liked it. Was, it was a toss up between The Woman in Black and The Little Hand. But I preferred this one. So... The next book is Who Goes There by John W. Campbell. It's not quite. Although my favourite film is The Thing, and that's the novella is in here that it's based on, the story I want to talk to you about is called Dead Knowledge. Dead Knowledge is a very, I think it's a quite a very short story. I should have probably checked this before I started. Hold on. I could pause this, but then you would miss out me chatting away. So, yeah, it's ooh, just over 100 pages long. And basically we have, I think they're astronauts or something along those lines. They go to a planet or a part of the planet and it's kind of desolated. There's nothing there. And they're coming across bodies of the people because no one's about on the streets. They don't know what's happened, but they keep finding people. But they look perfect, if my memory's serving. They look perfect. But there's something not right. And it's the and it's obviously the uncanny of having empty streets, but the people are there. They're dead, but they look completely alive. And then the voices start. Seriously, dead knowledge is definitely freaky. You've got a nice mix of sci-fi and horror. Sci-fi horror is definitely one of my favourite, if not my favourite, genre. So if anyone knows any, please recommend. I do love that. In film as well. Oh, what is it? Um, Event Horizon is just perfection. Maybe I should just do a video on my horror films. I have got, um, I think I've probably got the same amount of books to DVD ratio. <laughs> but yeah, so Dead Knowledge, it's such, so good. It's so short and it packs a punch. I really do love short stories because they get literally straight into it and then boom, punch you in the face. Fantastic. And I'm waffling. We're on 14 minutes. So let's get to the last book. The last book is Last Days by Adam Neville. Um... This basically follows a indie filmmaker and his cameraman who have been approached to kind of film a documentary for somebody. Um, they start the ball rolling. Things aren't quite as smooth as they would like. They are not 100% feeling the guy that sent them on assignment. He's definitely hiding something, but they carry on anyway. 
but then stuff happens and he is definitely hiding something this book terrified me it was fantastic I rarely read books that actually terrify me in the sense of when the light goes off and I'm like Whoop. but this book did that um, I was blown away by it, to be completely honest with you. The the creepiness, the atmosphere, the, the horrors that you are privy to and that you get to read about are articulated so well. You can see them. Um, the, the marks on the wall, that's not a spoiler, trust me, but the marks on the wall, even that was like, it's fantastic. So fantastic. So, yes, I absolutely recommend Last Days. I tried to read um, The Reddening recently and I wasn't feeling it so I may come back to that and I have the ritual um which I recently purchased so I'm excited to read that because I saw the film of that on Netflix and I love that I would love to see Last Days made into a film I don't know if they could or would or want to but it certainly deserves to either be read or seen by people it was just so good um and again I, I might be biased you know there's probably like bits in there that are like really awful but you know when you're on the ride and it's so good and the ending is so good I don't know I'm getting really excited um but yes yeah, so that is it and obviously I would like to add that perhaps it does go without mentioning that The Haunting of Hill House by Shirley Jackson yes the reason it's not here is because I moved all my classics yes bar HG Wells that sat right there upstairs and I can't be asked I've done so much housework before I sat down to do this video. I was like, no, I just want to sit down. But there you go. So there's some spooky book recommendations or just ones that I've enjoyed. You haven't got to read them. Yeah. So thank you so much for hanging out. It's been a pleasure. Um, yeah, I'm hoping to come back real soon, but we'll see how this video does first. Take care, guys. Be safe.